Welcome back to Thionite Plays Xenoblade Chronicles 3. On the last episode, the entire city got attacked by Mobius S, who was, unfortunately, Shania. Her journey met an untimely end at Gondor and Ouroboros' hand, but on this episode, we are hopefully moving past that and going to talk to the people of the city about the fallout of that attack. And we're going to be starting with this bit of gossip, because it is right here. Shiner, is, Shiner and his friends have been together a lot recently. What are they up to? They said adults aren't allowed in on the secret. I just hope they aren't up to anything too mischievous. Hmm, city children having some activities where no adults are allowed. I suppose we can go and track down gossip in regards to all of the kids. I wonder how everyone is doing. Oh, more gossip. I wonder if that's going to be in any way important to the children plot thread. Azalea greeted me just a moment ago. She looked a little brighter to me. I think that's because she made some friends. I see her playing in the plaza a lot. Now, if you don't remember, Azalea is part of the little quest that we did. The treasure hunt slash hide and seek mini quest in revolving around the kids that we did some time ago. We ended with a lot of talk about torpedoes and wraps. Torpedo wraps. I'm pretty sure we could combine those two things for something exponentially better than each of their individual parts. But that is fine. It's all right if you don't remember that. It's not important. Miori, do you have anything to say? I hear that Yarmul was kicked out of the Lost Numbers. I don't know who that is. News reaches you fast as ever. Well, it was me that gave the information to Rosanna. It was Yar Yarville, whatever his name is, the one who was helping the other one and Rosanna and Gray's quest. It was probably just some nameless lackey. When all the bad apples are weeded out, I think my job will be a bit easier. I well, I hope it all goes out well. I wonder where Rosanna is and how she's doing. Is that Rosanna? No, that's Boxy. Is that the one who really likes Miyabi? Oh, well, everyone likes Miyabi. Aren't the kids somewhere around over there? I feel like they are. Or, well, this is where they used to be. Oh, nope, that's San. San, you're a child. Let me talk to you, child. San, how are you doing? Azalea's dad got out of the prison camp and made it back. Oh, I didn't even realize Azalea's dad was part of Lee Gart Prison. Ooh, maybe we should go back to Colony Zero. Eventually, maybe. Azalea's really made up, and so am I. That's really good. This is our first time speaking. Oh, I'm so full up. What an awesome cook-off. Oh, were you one of the judges? I think you were one of the judges. I think next time I'm going to do the cooking instead of judging. Wow, that is some ambitious goals. I very much approve of this. Oh, Evelyn Kamaravi! Roy, you guys are hanging out here. How are you two doing? Come on now, surely you'd be fools not to take us with you. I feel you, really, I do, but we couldn't plunge you into all that chaos. I mean, Ethel's still so little. But she's really coming along. Leaps and bounds. You can't deny that the time that remains to us is limited. Even if it's a mere token, we want to try and repay you for what you did for us. Please. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Maybe. Ethel, what do you have to say about this? The final battle is here already? If Kamaravi is going, then I should go too. It's going to be very dangerous out there to put you into such peril. That's exactly why I want to go. If something happens to Kamaravi, I... I... Please, I'm begging you. Let me go with you. What an impassioned plea. If that is the case... Hmm. Hmm. I will remember this. I am currently... Uh, I have questions revolving... I really, really want to make sure that all of the people around the city are safe and relatively put together after the ordeal that is Shania. So I will not forget about you. Ethel Kamaravi, don't you worry... You're in the forefront of my mind after I make sure the children of the city are safe. And, you know, it sounds like they're pretty safe at the moment, considering they're all having a lot of fun and Azalea's looking brighter than ever and all that, but I still want to make sure. No, we're not eating, Gondor. No, it's not the time for that. Not the time at all. Sugu, hello, Sugu. Where is the gossip in regards to the child? Or any other gossip? Where's Monica? Doesn't she normally hang out around here? Hey, yo, Monica, you're right here. Let me talk. And Mwamba, I'll do everything I can to support you. If you defeat Mobius in their battle ahead, you'll finally set the world straight. I'm counting on you. Well, that's good. Mwamba, what about you? Hey, what you been up to lately? 
Right now I'm boning up on Lebnus related stuff. Maintenance, piloting, all that stuff. I'll need it if I'm going to travel the world. I promised Ellis a visit, so I gotta get all that stuff down pat soon as I can. You better make sure you keep to that promise, Mwamba. Ellis is pretty scary when the rage descends. Huh, for real? Wouldn't have thought that. Just imagine Ellis's face all screwed up with rage. Never underestimate the power of a soldier. No, you don't, Gondor. We're still... No, no, we're still gi digesting. Gi-desting the food. That's the word. I need to find this gossip before everything explodes and everything comes crashing down. Let me find the gossip. The city's a big place. I'm sure I'll run into it sooner rather than later. Oh, gossip. Just a bit further down the path. Are you what I'm looking for? I went to check out the city's former site, and there was this monster I'd never seen before. My legs nearly buckled from fear. But hey, I made it back in one piece. What even was that thing, though? Oh, this is this. Okay, we can talk about Ionios' strongest in a bit we're not gonna worry too much about those anytime soon because we are in no way shape or form ready to tackle ionius's strongest this particular bit of gossip is revolving entirely around the super bosses of xenoblade chronicles 3 and if you don't know what a super boss is if you recall from any amount of a normal playthrough of this game or any personal experience playing it there are unique monsters scattered around every location in Ionios. They're the ones with the uh, the special orange flamey portraits next to their names, and they have special names, and they're very strong monsters. But amongst all of the unique monsters, there are the uniquest of monsters, all of which are above level 99, which is the cap. As a player character, we can only get to 99, but the unique monsters, the super bosses, are not limited in that way. And we are going to uh, tackle those in the future because, as you might have gathered from this series, we have not fought even a single normal unique monster, let alone the super bosses. So we're not going to worry about those any time soon. We're going to worry about the children. What do I do? What I do to be a kid again and be friends with everyone from any faction? But those kids will grow up, and when they do, they'll see the situation for what it is and be at each other's throats. I'm sure. <laughs> just cut off lands. Talk of children is all you need to shut lands up, apparently. But not for long. All right, the city children are complete. We have the gossip, the local gossip from the parents about the children. Let us go to the city camp and speak about this, because I am 99% certain that this is a side quest. I am almost positive. Yes, discuss. We're not here for food or clean clothes. It isn't. That's relatively shocking to me. I genuinely thought because it was a three a three part gossip thing that we'd have a quest for this, but apparently not. City children, all right. You will come around for a second. That's fine. Looks like the little puzzle founder and Shiner's lot are getting on well. Yeah, Zillia's really started to come out of her shell. I'm glad it all worked out. It must be nice to be so carefree, mingling with the others regardless of position or ideology. But it doesn't seem as though everyone takes that in such a positive light. I find that marginally worrying. What do you all think? This is about Shiner's gang getting together for activities, right? I say it's a good thing that they're all, you know, crossing the political lines and, you know, joining each other. It's like, those those kind of views shouldn't even be imposed on children on the first place. So the fact that they could... This is how change is sparked, Tyon. If we can overcome the differences as kids, and we can maintain those perspectives, those positions, as they grow up, then they can be the ones that institute change. It's a good thing that they're intermingling in such a way. It makes sense that people might worry if they don't know what's going on. I, it's, it's the goal of the more educated folk to teach them what's going on without biasing them to one view or another. Does it matter, though? They don't look like they're up to mischief. Oh, I mean, if a child does not look like they're up to mischief, then they are guaranteed to be up to mischief. Hmm, I agree, but if you're worried about them, let's just drop by. If there's nothing going on, we can just have a little chat, and that'll be that. Yeah, we'll get nothing done talking here. Let's head over to Rebelli Plaza when we've got a free moment. Is there a quest involving this? I can go to Rebelli Plaza. Where exactly? Is that the one down, down the stairs? 
just below the Remembrance Stones. Man, everyone is really talkative. Is this Rebelli Plaza? Or is this, this is Virid Park. Where, oh where, is Rebelli Plaza? Where is this? Um, Serene Square, Michibuk Canteen. Rebelli Plaza, is that? Is that up above over in this direction? Oh, no, there it is. I'm just blind and missing the very obvious question mark. Okay, so there is actually a side quest revolving around this. I did not remember incorrectly. It's just strange that the quest was not activated by the gossip, but it allowed the quest to be spawned. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. We're definitely going to do whatever this question mark mysteriously wants us to do. Hello, random children. What current plan, what mischief are you up to? If it isn't our favorite... Ah! Run! No, wait, please, tiny children. We are not here to hurt you. What? What are you running off for? Get back here. I assume there's something they don't want us to know about. This is the mischief that they were trying to hide. Okay, this does look a bit shifty, so... Are they up to something nefarious? Lens, I think you're drastically overestimating... Well... Children can be very nefarious at times, especially a crafty, well-educated child. And something tells me that Azalea, Puzzle Master, is a very crafty and educated indeed. Hmm, perhaps you're not too far off the mark, lads. What are you asking me for? How should I know? He's right, we should ask Shiner and the others directly. We'd better get after him then. No one outruns Lightning Lands! Ah, oh, don't go running around like an idiot. It's not a competition. Let's go nice and easy. You need nothing is ever nice and easy when it comes to lightning lands. The kid's aspiration. Let us go track down these wild children. Four different locations. I'm sure this will be relatively easy to track down because we have the all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, floating exclamation marks. Uh, that one would be the easiest one to get to first, but this one's only 56. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to go to all of them eventually. Dive bomb this kid. Neon, what are you up to? Oh, crud, you found me. Oh, is this the hiding seek game? Did I just have a really both terrible and accurate memory? Terrible in the fact that I didn't remember that the previous quest involving the city children was hide and seek, but great in the fact that I probably remembered it from the first Let's Play playthrough. Not a Let's Play. I didn't record that. Out with it. Why'd you run away? Focus on the more important issues. Sorry, I can't say why. I promised. Who did you promise? Secret. Okay, I have to go. Bye. Are we just going to allow this children to leave? All right. Uh, fine, Lance. Fine. We can let them go. We get, We have three more leads to track down. We can find them. One of them is going to break and spill the beans. That's the power of Ouroboros. We can just throw Uni at them, and she can be very intimidating. And if that doesn't work, we can get Mio to spare it. Stare, spare at them? So we can spare them... Uh, the indignity of having to deal with Uni, and we can make them face Mio's disappointed eyes. Because anyone who has ever faced Mio's disappointing eyes caves instantly. Oh, Monument to Founder. Oh, that was strange seeing it through the game. The ground. The game? Azalea! You are the mastermind. I'm not going to say anything, and you can't make me. You want to bet on that? Trying to head us off at the pass, eh? What is this, Thermopylae? We aren't interested in chasing you. We just want information. And if you don't provide this information, I'm going to get your dad on the line. Because I know he's back. We saved his life. He owes us a life debt from this. We just want to make sure nothing dangerous is going on. It's not dangerous, but I can't say anything more than that. I'm not going to break a promise to my friends. Friends, eh? Sounds like you're doing pretty well for friends. Uh, thanks, though, for, you know. Hmm. That's all you're getting out of me, okay? Bye. Okay, bye, flower child. What is happening? Lands, the children are keeping secrets, and they're not telling us, which is very good for them because, you know, the the integrity of the children that we are interacting with is 100%. Unbreakable vows of friendship. We're not going to get anywhere by standing here and wondering. Let's go ask the others. We have two more. Two more. Where are the other ones? Probably hiding in the bushes over there, and then probably eating the torpedo wraps in the city. Well, we're in the city, but, you know, Serene Square or whatever it's called. Are you Shiner? You are Shiner. 
I remember this because Shiner is the only one with a red backpack. Shiner! Oh, it's you lot. Sorry for surprising you. We're just a little bit worried about how you shouted run when we saw you in the plaza. We aren't angry. Could you just tell us what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't right now. But I definitely will later. Just wait a little bit longer. Bye. Oh man, these kids, they are very, very powerful to be able to forcibly put us into a state of temporary unconsciousness. The entire screen fades to black and they just run away. They're more powerful than Mobius if they can knock us out for however brief a time. We need to learn this power from them. Is that a knob on? Gigi, you're involved in this. Do you have any wisdom? Almost like time stopped for everyone. So scary. Gigi rushed to cover face. Cover your face? Why? Think about, what if time stop in middle of squint? Or while nose holes flaring? Nose holes? Do Nopons not have proper noses? Or do they just have nose holes? I have so many brand new anatomical questions about Nopon that this one spare sentence has r given rise to. Alone thought it was enough for Gigi to break out in icy sweat. Gigi have pride, you know. Nose holes. Nose holes. Hmm. Questions for later. I have even... I have yet another life-changing question for Zed when we meet him. San, I feel like I just spoke to you. Give it up, San, you've been found. This is, this is City PD. We're here to... This is a sting. Get down or we'll waterboard your dog. I don't know. That, that's a bit... That's a bit too far probably oh that was so much fun is this fun for you you think making us run around the entire city is fun is it not fun for you yeah that's besides the point fact is you love running away that makes it look like you're doing something dodgy nefarious one might say how about you just spill the beans and get this over with um oh i know come to rebelli plaza and you'll find out anyway that's all i'm saying see ya man these kids what, are, what is Monica teaching them? Can we do the Noah Neum? It's been a while since we've done a Noah Neum all the way to the plaza. I really, everyone is in the way of the Noah Neum. Uh, we have to get an overhead shot all the way over there. And we're arrived. That was probably inefficient for Noah because, you know, the Noah Neum is very energy intensive for him. Not like the Senna skip, but because Senna is, well... She's she's taking a time out from the the Senna skips. She's a uh, she. I think I think we might have pushed her a bit too far. She's probably still recovering from the uh, the Shania episode. It looks like everyone is doing good on that front at the very least. The only one who's mentioned it is Gigi. I mean, we haven't really talked to a lot of people, but if Monica hasn't brought it up, then I'd assume everything is relatively fine. Children, gossip. Why are we here? Why have you given us the runaround? All right, so there's no one here. Promising. Now! We want to... Thank you. For everything. This is from us. <gasps> gifts! Oh, wow! Gifts from city children. A shackle ring? What does this represent? A shackle. Are you trying to say that we have been now imprisoned by you? Oh, I think we might have just become, you know, the newest slaves of the city children. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, apparently it's a cute ring, and I've misconstrued the meaning severely. Neat, but what's the occasion? We wanted to surprise you, so we made it in secret. It was Neon's idea. I found one on my granddad's old accessories when I was sweeping. It was like a charm he wore when he was a soldier. And then I thought, hey, we can make one of those for the guys. What? It's handmade, too? I didn't think we'd really do it. But Azalea is the one who looked up how to make it. Yeah, well, you guys said you wanted to thank everyone, so... That's Azalea all over, and she's had tons of fun doing it. She was singing Mr. Boomer's song constantly. So what? I like that song. Anyway, take the ring into battle with you, yeah? We can't go out and fight ourselves because we're kids. But we really wanted to help you out somehow. You're Ouroboros, after all. We wanted to know that you'd come home, even if it was a really, really, really hard battle. And you really don't mind giving us something so lovely. That's what we made it for. So you'd always be around. Now you can always remember that there are people waiting for you. 
I promise we will. Hmm. Sorry we made you worry, though. I like the part where we got chased. It wasn't meant to be fun. Let's do it again. Yeah, let's have fun. Gotta have the fun. Man, this was surprisingly wholesome. It wasn't nefarious at all. It was just a bunch of kids coming together to give us an incredible gift. The kids' aspiration. The kids were making an accessory as a present to give the Ouroboros. Repay them by defeating Mobius. For no other reason will we now fight Mobius. We must repay this debt to these incredible kids. They're so kind and so lovely. Edelin Kamaravi, I will get back to you guys very shortly. I have one last thing to do before we can potentially come back here with some meaningful dialogue. We need to do, and for this, because we need to go quite far, we need to use Senna. Even if she is currently outfitted as a healer, I think she has enough strength for one Senna skip. If we can just position things properly. Now, everyone is in the way and making this incredibly difficult. We need to we need to get the energies proper. Oh, the fence. This is not a good place for this. It's either too but well, this is good enough. I think this might be a serviceable angle for the Senna skip. As incredible and successful as ever, Senna, thank you so much for bringing us all the way to Colony Mew with that single powerful skip. Tesore, I have things upon which to give you to feed your creatures. Thanks to all your help, my adolescent darlings are almost all grown up. And of course, that means I'll need to increase their portion size just a bit more again. Between episodes, I have done something incredible. I have gotten rid of all of the things that I could possibly give to Tesore. I got rid of all of my fish philodendron. I only had one. I got rid of my one frangible yams. I, I had a, a dance apple, I think, and heart peaches. I think I might have had some acorns, but I went and gave them all. And then I got some more armor barley from directly outside of Colony Mew. All I did was I went straight to the beach, picked up all the collectibles on the way to the beach outside of Colony Mew, saved the game, quit out the game, and then walked back to Colony Mew and repeated that process like three separate times to get all of the barley that I needed. They give 5%. We have four of them. That's a total of 20. I only need three because I have 85, and that's a convenient way of doing it. One more will get us to 100. How time flies. My nearly groans are now fully grown up. Thanks for everything you've done. Oh, that is incredible. So truly incredible. Oh, thank you very much. All my sweeties can now stuff their little bellies nice and full. All that's left now is to select the big Armus and Ardens one by one and pair them together. The day after it rains, a little one should be born. Hmm, and the Ardens and Arden you pair up need to be compatible with each other as well, right? Absolutely. I'd like to ask your advice again, if you don't mind. Oh, yes. I believe, I believe for this one, this is, let me pull up my list because I can't keep anything straight in my brain. I believe this one is going to be the Gourmet Armu and the Excitable Arden. I'm fairly certain that this is the proper one, and if it's not, I'm going to cry. Gourmet Armu and Excitable Arden for stage three, I believe that this is the one. How about putting the Gourmet Armu and the Excitable Arden together? They'd make for one gluttonous pairing, that's for sure. Oh, does that mean I have to incidentally get them more food? Oh boy. Still, you gotta eat well to live well. The bigger they are, the tastier the milk, so I say let them eat everything they can fit in their bellies. Steel cages and fences and all. In that case, I guess we'll go with the pairing you suggested. Yes, please, don't make me second guess myself. Thank you so much. Then I think we found our pairing. Now we just have to wait for the rain, right? Perhaps we could ask Pitapata to summon some rain if we really need to. Senna, you're incredible. Let's circle back when it's rained. All right, we'll be waiting. Luckily for you, I can make things rain incredibly easily. Watch this. Lightning Lands has brought the thunder. To Sore, I have made the, the sky cry. I was about to say the Kai scry because my language skills are thoroughly into the ground at this point. This new baby really is a lively one. Oh, is it? What do we name it? Cured Armu Sirloin, Fresh Armu Milk, Some More Arden Meat, and Arden Horns. I have no idea what I can do with this. Tesori, do I have any items upon which to give you? What do these teensy Armus eat again? We have been through this three separate occasions. Why are you so many questions? 
I'm not giving you armor barley. We need a bunch of that. I found a bunch of perfume herbs in the 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 blah 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 blah. The time I I found herbs as well as barley. Uh, pulp grass. I have an absolute metric butt ton of pulp grass, so you can have some of that. Thank you for ever so much. I'll make sure my armors gr grow up big and healthy. More. More. I have more. Some armors have such a voracious appetite. They're raising through so much feed, it's crazy. If I don't restock soon, there might not be enough feed for all my precious darlings. More. You desire more. What do I have a lot of? I have... Oh, there are only four, though. Um, beautiful shoots? No. Armu barley? No. I mean, I have the most... I have a lot of polarizing pips. So, you can have... I think you can also find those outside of col uh, outside of Colony Mew. So, you can have one of those and... Uh, I have a lot of juicy melons. You can have three juicy melons. Why not? I've never seen so much feed in one place. I really appreciate your help. Oh, that's right. My new sweeties have names now. Tell me them. Tell me. I must know. Lotus and Goo are kind enough to help think them up for me. Well, you all, why do you always taunt me with name knowledge, but never tell me? Thanks to all your help, my adolescent darlings are almost all grown up. Right, portion size. Oh, God, I have to do this again. Right, probably again between episodes, I'll go and get enough Armu Barley. All 20 bits of Armu Barley, or however much I need to find. So we're not going to worry about that right now. So, Tesori, I hope your darlings are going to be able to feed themselves on the grasses and fences around Colony Mew. Because I don't have enough barley, and I don't want to get any right now. So, with that, I am not wrapping up the episode. We are making a return trip to the city, because my efficiency is non-existent. I am as efficient with my planning on these episodes and what I do within them, as I am with my language and my words. So, to the city we go. Returning once more to the city, Tyon takes the stage, and hopefully, hopefully this has something for us. If Ethel and Kamaravi are so dead set, wait, do they have to be in our party? Ooh, they might have to be in our party. Ooh, um, Ethel, Kamaravi, it has to be Kamaravi, doesn't it? Yes, put them, why can I not? Oh, I just, I, for a brief second, I had to, I thought I had to, like, it's like, do you want to add this hero? Confirm, yes. But apparently, you just, you just click it and don't act like an idiot. All right, well, now that Kamaravi is in the party, do we have to go somewhere else for this? Ethel, the final battle is here already. If Kamaravi's going, then I should go too. It's going to be very dangerous out there to put you into such peril. It's exactly why I need to go. If something happens to Kamaravi, please, I'm begging you. Hmm... I would like to do Ethel and Kamaravi's, or well, Kamaravi is at the very least. I would like to do Ethel's as well. Hmm, Kamaravi, where do I have to go for this? I think I have a vague memory. I think, I think you have to go back to Colony Omega. That's in, that's in Etia, the upper region. I think it's Colony Omega. If I haven't forgotten, if I haven't forgotten. I think I remember this. I'm not sure if I have to do any prerequisites. Let's see. If nothing comes of this, I will say, if this is a uh, a barren tree upon which we are barking up, I do have a backup plan that I have spawned between cuts because that's how powerful and thought-provoking I am. I, I'm fairly certain we have to return to Colony Omega for this. But I'm again, I'm not 100% certain if we need to do... Tyon, you read my mind. Yes, you can actually go into the very same base upon which we have seen Mio and Miyabi's memories. It was just in through here. I believe some of these doors or wherever there were the escape pods, or it might have been in the original one. But this is the very same area that we have seen so many of Console Y's experimentations take place. Honestly, all things considered, it is a rather small place. You can only go in into this particular lab, but that's, you know, fairly more than you might have expected otherwise. What is this place? And is that a cradle? I remember this room. Anything you want to tell us, Kamaravi? This is where I awoke, met Miyabi and the others. So that means that cradle is... 
It is no simple cradle. Fitted inside is a device which matures a life to a state close to homecoming. That makes sense. So that's what Y used when reviving Mwamba and the others. Kamaravi, is that cradle still usable? The installation works, just barely. Why do you ask such a thing? Uh... Ethel, you're not thinking... Our enemies are supernatural beings. Monsters who use human lives for fodder. You can all fight against them, but me... As I am now, I'm barely able to protect myself. All I can really do is hang back and watch, so as not to be a hindrance. But, suppose I was to use this cradle... Ethel, you don't have anything to prove. As far as the choices available to you go, you could also return to the city and live a peaceful life. And yet, you're saying you want to throw your body back under war's grindstone and spend your life fighting. But then, you are ever thus. By the time you speak your mind, your body and soul are long ready. I think you should do as you wish. Kamaravi, are you sure it's fine? To embroil her in what's ultimately our fight? Ethel's path should be hers to choose. I'm certain her resolve is firm. If she wished for a life of peace, she would not have followed us this far. The way must have been inside her all along. I suppose that's true, yes. But still... I am anxious about the result, same as you. Nevertheless, as a devoted follower of none other but the warrior's way myself, I wish to respect the will and resolve of one who has chosen the same path. I believe Ethel's freedom is hers to do with as she wishes. Thank you, Kamaravi. At the same time, I am of course not in a position to decide such things myself. We have conveyed to you our desire. Would you tell us your opinion in turn? <sighs> Well, what should we do? All things considered, I'm not entirely certain that forcing... Well, forcing is the wrong word, but having Ethel undergo such a cost-heavy, really... This, this, this is not a decision to be made lightly, but all things considered, I do find myself to be agreeing with Kamaravi. This is Silvercoat Ethel we're talking about. And to force her to act against her own wishes, because it's very clear, it's very clear that Ethel wants to do this. And I do agree that with Kamaravi, once her mind is made up, there is no changing that. Ethel will do as Ethel does. So in that vein, I am going to respect Ethel's choices and allow... Well, allow is still the wrong word. I am going to give her my support and uh, help her through this. Whatever that means and whatever that entails, I will do this for you, Ethel. I support your choices.
How are you feeling, Ethel? Oh, never better. I mean that literally. It's as though new strength is welling up inside of me. This way I'll be able to fight by your side, too. You have my thanks. Huh. What's wrong, Kamaravi? Silvercoat. Oh. Silvercoat? What does that mean? I'm not sure. When I saw you just now, the word simply came to me. As though something was guiding me. What in the world? This sensation! From where did it spring? Kamaravi. I can explain. What we should be thinking about now is the future. What we can achieve in unison, no? Huh. I said I could be your eyes. That has not changed. Just as you showed me the way before, let me now be your guide. You are right. You can see that which I cannot, indeed. I wanted to live life true to myself, but the answer is still not clear. But perhaps, by working together with you... Let's search for the answer hand in hand, Kamaravi. With unity between us, nothing can be impossible. Short, sweet, and to the point, Smoldering Kamaravi has broken through his limits and can now ascend to level 20. And we have also got a two-for-one special on Hero Ascension Quest. Silver Coat Ethel, the Flash Fencer, has also shattered her limits and can now ascend to level 20. That is so truly thing. incredible. I believe that is... The quickest hero quest? Are we done with it? Are we actually done with that particular ascension quest? It looks like we're done with the ascension quest. Well, would you believe it? Would you believe it if I told you that that was all it took? Very quick. Although I didn't get a quest complete. Do we not? Do we not have it? No one for courage. That's a different thing. We didn't get... Well, we did get the Ascension, so I can only assume that that's complete. But that is uh, a pretty wonderful thing. Because uh, both Kamaravi and Ethel now have their class limits broken. We can show this off going into our Heroes tab. Very clearly, Ethel can now get to rank 20. Which, well, she is at rank 20. But we as heroes, as Flash Fencers ourselves, can now also get to rank 20. I feel like Noah will appreciate that immensely. And then we also have Kamaravi, which is something that Tyon will appreciate rather immensely. Two for one special! That was a rather quick one, rather easy. We only had to go to Colony Omega and bing bam boom, plug her into the machine and out she comes all <laughs> 10 terms later. So who, what heroes do we even have left to do Ascension Quests for? We're done with Ethel, we've done Valdi, Zeon, Teach, Juniper, uh, Izzard, the name is on the screen. We've done Grey, Riku, Manana. We haven't done Ashira yet. I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We'll get to, we'll get to the battle-hungry demon herself. Alexandria, we've done. We still have to do Monica. Monica and Gondor, I believe. Monica, Gondor, Triton. We've done Miyabi, Kamaravi, and Fiona. So we only have four, four left to do. Well, five. Sagiri, Triton, Gondor, I was about to say Mon Mondor or something like that, conflating their names. Maybe we have a more city-focused episode because I feel like, I feel like we could technically do uh, Monica as well as Gondors at some point. Although I might want to do Tritons. I don't know. We will consider what we do for the Hero Ascension quests eventually. And then there is also, there is also this stuff. There is also volumes 2 and 3. Eventually, sooner than you might think, we will be getting around to these particular 
heroes because uh, a little bit of a spoiler, well, not a spoiler at all. Uh, <laughs> really, there is no spoiler. I've never done volume two or volume three. I know that this particular blade slash hero is called Eno or something like that, I think. I could be wrong. I could just be an idiot or well, an ignorant fool perhaps. And then I, I don't even know which one, what this one is called, but I do want to do those before the main story ends. Uh, volume four, that, that's, that's gonna be the, <laughs> oh, I can't wait. And then we'll talk more about volume one eventually, but I think that's gonna be wrapping up for today's episode. Two ascension quests for the price of one and super quickly as well to boot. It was a quick, quick little thing, a quick little, little excursion. Man, I need to end this episode before my language abandons me completely. But that is going to wrap it up for today. We got a surprising amount done. We fed some animals. We got a gift from some kids. We turned a kid into an adult. Though, to be fair, it's the silver coat herself. So I suppose that doesn't really count because Ethel is very old in soul indeed. She's a warrior. You can never take the warrior out of the warrior, especially when they walk their own warrior's way. But that's going to be it once again for this wonderful episode of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So whether you watched it for 30 seconds or the entire thing, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode. Later!